Welcome back everyone. For our final example on custom hooks, we are going to take a look at input elements. As before, we will tackle this in two parts. In the first half, we will write code without any custom hooks. In the second half, we will move some logic into a custom hook. Let's begin. For this example, we will implement a simple form where the user can submit their first name and last name. I'm going to begin by creating a new file called userform.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. We need two state variables for first name and last name. So I'm going to import useState and create the two variables. First name and last name. Next, let's add the JSX. I'm going to add a form tag and within the form tag, we create input elements for first name and last name. So a div tag, within the div tag, a label tag, the text is going to be first name and then an input element type is equal to text. Now let's duplicate this code for last name. The next step is to convert these input elements into controlled components. So for first name, value is going to be equal to first name and on change is going to be equal to, we get the event and set first name to event.target.value. I'm going to format this and then repeat the same for last name. Copy, paste, value is last name and on change, set last name. Finally, I'm going to add a submit button. Button, submit, and on the submit handler for the form, on submit is equal to submit handler. And we define this submit handler. You get access to the event. We call prevent default to stop the page from refreshing. And then I will simply alert, hello, first name, space, last name. All right, that should do. Let's save the file, include it in app.js and test this out. You can see that we have two input fields and the submit button. If I enter Bruce Wayne and click on submit, we get an alert, hello, Bruce Wayne. Pretty straightforward. Now let's create our custom hook. What our custom hook has to do is sort of encapsulate this controlled component behavior for an input element. That is binding the value and on change attributes. Let's see how. Within the hooks folder, I'm going to create a new file called useInput.js. Within the file, I am going to use the snippet rfce to add the boilerplate code. Again, we don't return any JSX, so there is no need to import React. What we do need though is the useState hook. Next, let's create a state variable which basically tracks the input field's value. So value comma set value and the default value will be a variable called initial value, which will be passed in as a parameter. Now that we have the value and the function to update the value, let's add our own logic. I'm going to create a function called reset, which will set the value back to the initial value. 
I will also create an object with two properties. The first property is value, which is set to value, or we can use ES6 shorthand syntax and specify just value. And the second property is on change, which is going to be a function that receives the event as a parameter and sets the value to event.target.value. Finally, we return three different things. We return the value itself, the bind object, and the reset function. Now, let's see how to incorporate this in our component. I'm going to begin by calling the use input hook. This will also auto import the hook at the top. Now this particular use input is to replace the use state call for the first name. The initial value is an empty string, so let's specify the same. Next, we know that a call to use input returns three values. Let's destructure them. The first item is the value of the input element, which is first name. The second item is the bind object, which we are going to call as bind first name. The final item is the reset function, which we are going to call as reset first name. This is going to be equal to use input. Now you can get rid of the use state call. Similarly, let's invoke use input again for the last name. Last name bind last name, reset last name is equal to use input and the initial value is an empty string. Again, make sure to delete the use state call. Now you can see that the values for first name and last name are already being used in the submit handler. But how do we make use of the remaining two items? Well, it's simple. Bind first name is going to replace the value and on change attributes for first name and bind last name is going to replace the value and on change attributes for the last name. This is possible because the code is in fact one and the same value and on change, value and on change. When specifying as an attribute though, we do have to use the spread operator. Dot 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 bind first name. Dot 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 bind last name. Now for the reset functions. We can make use of them in the submit handler. Reset first name and reset last name. And that is pretty much it. Let's save the files and take a look at the browser. You can see that there is no change in the UI. Now, when I try type in first name and last name, it still works fine. I click on submit. We see the alert dialog. And when we go back, the two input fields are reset. Our use input custom hook works as expected. Now this is a slightly more complicated custom hook than the ones we have seen before. But once you understand how it works, it all starts to make sense and will become much easier to understand. You might have realized by now that there are endless possibilities for creating custom hooks. Also, there are tons of custom hooks already created by others, but I would encourage you all to create a few to get a better understanding of React hooks. Well, with that, we come to the end of this series on React hooks. If you guys enjoyed the series, please do leave a like and share this playlist with your friends or teammates. As always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, take care.